Hello, and welcome to my workshop. Uh, this is number 200 video, um, and it's probably going to be the last video for uh, a couple of weeks, because uh, we're taking a, a well-deserved vacation. So we'll make this one something special. So what I'm going to do is I am going to carve on the CNC machine, the PT6090, um, the grapevine in some red, beautiful deep red Jarrah Australian wood. Okay, so I've set the material up nice and square on the table now. Uh, firmly connected to it, screwed directly into my waste sheet actually. That's the way I prefer to do it. That's the easiest way to, to, to do it actually. I've set my zero position here so the the beginning of the program or the orientation of the program is down here in this bottom corner. The 3D cut is going to be 500 millimeters long and 165 millimeters wide which leaves me a, a frame or border uh, around here about 20 millimeter up the sides and 50 millimeter on, on the ends, which gives me enough room when it's finished that I can cut this off and make it, um, oh, and plane this, because this is rough sawn, but this is plain. Um, and then I can make a pre presentable wall plaque very presentable actually this this will this wood is absolutely beautiful but you have to slow your cutting feeds up because it's very very hard uh, probably harder than oak so here we go we'll start up This next couple of clips, uh, I'm showing you really that I'm taking it very gently. I, I've, I've actually slowed the um, cutting or feed rate up uh, and I'm just taking a three millimeter depth of cut uh, and a step over of three millimeter, as you can see there by the tooling marks. Um, this wood is very, very hard um, and what I found machining this type of wood it's sort of brittle so if you take too much of a cut what happens is it just splinters it away and it <laughs> it uh, of course splinters out wood that you really don't want taken away and it, it can splinter it out of um, like the 3d relief that you you um, you want really left there so uh, machining this wood You've got to sort of be a little careful and um, just take it conservatively. This next clip, um, I'll just show you a little bit of Mark 3 and um, actually what's more important is the tooling marks left behind are quite plain in this shot so you can see that they're, they're quite um, grouped together so that just to go, goes to show you that it is a, um, a three millimeter step over and um, step down as well but I've actually speeded the feed rate up you've just got to see how you're going uh, with it and um, you know the wood will tell you how quickly it wants machining if you machine too quickly, uh, like I say, you can splinter. It can actually burn as well if you have the um, the rotor tool, um, you know, spinning too fast. This is 18,000 RPM, I believe. I can't quite see it there, but yeah, I think it's 18,000, um, which is quite fast enough. It's um, a three flute uh, end mill actually. This next shot um, is, I, I'm actually using the uh, Z height setting uh, tool, 
which comes um, as a uh, as a standard item with uh, our machines actually and uh, this is one of the new tapered tools it's um, a two millimeter ball at the bottom and it um, the as it goes up to the shank I think it's 40 millimeters something like that it uh, the maximum I think it goes up to is, is six millimeters which is about a quarter of an inch uh, and I'm showing you there that uh, I've actually speeded up the feed rate um, I believe that is um, it's over a hundred millimeters uh, a second I believe um, this next shot uh, actually I do a, a sweep around um, I sort of show mark three there and I got the other end of the my bench and I've got the little mini mill uh, which two two or three videos ago I, I showed uh, completed I'm running this uh, in the background uh, just giving it a bit of a workout because uh, uh, it's only been about a week that I've actually got it running and um, I've just got a couple of programs that I'm running through it uh, this particular one is I think cutting a 50 mil uh, pocket and I think at the next shot uh, I've actually got it doing the drilling process of that plate that uh, you can see on there. Uh, there are two videos, uh, I think two behind this one, um, where I show you how to set this up in Mark III. And um, yeah, uh, very worthwhile little project that. Uh, I, I've done this one to uh, now so I can uh, machine steel because uh, you know, there's quite a few little jobs that I need done that uh, require steel or cast iron so there's that this next shot uh, I'm actually showing you that I'm running the PT6012 on a laptop I personally use Hewlett and Packard um, they're good good machines and um, just to prove to you that it uh, does run uh, on a laptop uh, it's Windows 7 and um, Mark 3 obviously uh, this is now running at um, I believe about a hundred and ten uh, millimeters a second uh, you'll, you'll notice here um, with this run that on the flat area the tool accelerates up and then deaccelerates to lift in the Z uh, and if it's a gentle curve obviously it speed, speeds up but you can actually detect here that um, for the Z height to to um, be able to operate correctly uh, Mark 3 and well at cam actually at cam the way they wrote the write the program is that they slow uh, slow the I suppose the progression of X up to cope or to wait for the tool to be lifted and um, it does a very very nice job very very smooth uh, and as you see there's, there's very very little work to be done by hand uh, at the end of it uh, just a little tiny bit of uh, fraying on the uh, the grapes there you see um, but very very little uh, manual work is required. And you can see in this next shot, I mean, this is straight off the machine. I, I've actually just undone the screws and I thought, oh, I'd better um, do a little bit of a video shot here. And this is how it comes off the machine. And uh, what else can be said? Uh, 
and that is straight off the machine. Um, I haven't even cut the top and bottom off yet. Uh, I haven't done any hand finishing and um, that's straight off the machine. So the PT6012 does a really really good job. And the PT6012 is quite capable of cutting three to four of these a day. Um, now this is really beautiful wood. Um, this is J uh, Australian Jarak. So it's a, a fairly exotic wood. A finished product like this um, all nicely varnished up demands $150. So, so you can imagine um, turning out quality such as this with a PT6012 and at cam. Well, as an example, if you purchased at cam standard, it'd pay for pay for itself in less than a day. So uh, you can imagine the you know you can make a very comfortable uh, living and a very good business with these um, Pacific Tooling CNC routers uh, combined with uh, the ATCAM program. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video today and if you have please press like, subscribe to my channel and uh, there's a little red box down in that bottom corner there sometimes. Um, you press on that it'll take you to my YouTube channel with is now 200 videos um, ranging from CNC routing, at cam, wood turning, 3D printing, shop jobs that I do around here, um, even down to making toys like the little Land Rover down there. So all I got to say now is bye for now and I hope you call back in soon to see me. Bye now.